Welcome to Joshua Tree! And there is so much to do here. We figured we would narrow it down to our top 10 favorites and bring you along. It is 4.27 a.m. and we are headed to Joshua Tree to see the sunrise. Just getting to the gate. Hey, Frank, good morning. How are you? How are the kids? I know, right? One of us is a morning person. It's not this guy. Apparently, you're supposed to be an amazing sunrise here. So, Flo, we said hi. Catch you later, buddy. One of us definitely needs coffee. 4 a.m. wake up calls do make some people a little crazy, but it's typically worth it especially for these kinds of views. We made it to Choya Gardens just in time for the sunrise and it's so pretty. Chala Gardens is one of the most famous areas of Joshua Tree thanks to these super cute little cacti called Teddy Bear Chala. But don't let the name fool you. They might look soft and cuddly, but they aren't. These little cacti are just as prickly as others, if not more. But with the mountains to the east of the garden, it's the perfect place to watch the sunrise. Now that we have got to experience a Joshua Tree sunrise, we figure since we're already in the park and it's basically a geographical oddity, you're 30 to 45 minutes from anywhere from here, check out a hike. We're here to check out Skull Rock. And if you want to see Skull Rock, the secret is to get here super early because this place gets packed during the day. When we visited before, we've seen people actually climbing into the skull for selfies. I quickly learned that my climbing skills weren't up to par for that. I think I see a way. Not that way. <laughs> okay, so maybe both of us need some rock climbing lessons, but we'll save that for another day. I snapped a photo of Dee's best attempt and off we went to our next adventure. This is the Hidden Valley Trail. It's a really cool one. Locals told us if there was only one hike we were going to do in Joshua Tree, that this should be it. The history of it is really interesting. Apparently, we're going to walk into a valley where they used to keep illegal cattle. Ooh. Bum bum bum. Naughty. Into the valley we go, and as you can see, someone has finally woken up. We've been on the trail now for about 20 minutes and we have not seen a single other human being. Just another good reason as to why getting out here early makes perfect sense. And since it's already 7.15ish, it's not even really that early at this point. Do you love getting to see beautiful places like this? Make sure to subscribe to our channel. That way you'll be the first to know when our weekly videos are available for your viewing pleasure. Welcome to the Great Burrito. If you're not much of a rock climber, you probably don't know that Joshua Tree is world-class rock climbing. And behind me is one of the most popular spots. But I mean, does that look like a tasty burrito to you? I'm a world-class climber, just so you know. <laughs> Nailed it. I think getting up at 4 a.m. is starting to catch up to me. It is definitely time for coffee. And with that in mind, we're gonna go check out the top coffee shop in Joshua Tree. 
All right, we've made it to coffee. Somebody desperately needs it. <sighs> desperately. But I don't even do coffee, and I'm pretty excited about this because we came here yesterday and it was so busy we couldn't even get a cup. So it has to be good. Excited, just got some coffee. Now it's time to grab some breakfast. We came here first day to grab lunch, it's very casually, and then we loved it. So that of course is why we're here again today. And since I love breakfast, I did a tofu hash. And Daniel got his favorite go-to. The Beyond Burger. Good. With full bellies, we headed back home to the Airstream, which brings us to our sixth thing to do in Joshua Tree that you really don't want to miss. If you watched our last video, you saw our day in a life here in Joshua Tree living in the Airstream. Camping in Joshua Tree is definitely one of the must do's. We've stayed here while camping in the Airstream, and we've stayed at a ritzy hotel that was on the south side of Joshua Tree. Although the hotel is wonderful, you really get a different experience of Joshua Tree being here in camping. You're in the midst of the most beautiful sunsets you've ever seen, and you just kind of get a taste of what desert life is really like. Speaking of how amazing camping is in Joshua Tree is a perfect segue into the seventh thing on our list. Check out a local music festival. And this one just happens to be literally a couple of steps from the Airstream because our campground also doubles as the Joshua Tree Music Festival venue. If you've never heard of the Joshua Tree Music Festival, you're missing out. They have one big event each year, but they also have a series of spring concerts, which is what we're attending. The vibe of this place is simply magic. It's totally outdoors and listening to live music under the desert sky is so relaxing. As you can see, the venue's set up for multiple stages and tons of local vendors, and the desert style is really unlike anything we've seen elsewhere. We had the pleasure of meeting the owner, who's a local of course, and he envisioned the place over 20 years ago. He spoke with the family who owns our campground, told him about his idea, and to his surprise, they agreed it should be done. It's grown little by little into this spectacular music sanctuary, which only gets more fun as the sun sets. Before we knew it, it was time to head back to the Airstream and call it a night because we have big plans for tomorrow morning. One of the things that makes Joshua Tree so much fun to visit is how eclectic it is. And everywhere you turn, there's a dinosaur on the side of the road or funky new cool looking art pieces. But the next place we're gonna visit and show you might be the epitome of all of the art put together in Joshua Tree. Although we didn't include this in our top 10 things to do, it is super fun to peruse the local shops and vintage thrift stores in downtown Joshua Tree. You can find some really unique stuff. Daniel and I love to find unique attractions wherever we visit. And this one takes the cake for not only being a local creation, but being the most unique thing on our top 10 list. Welcome to the world famous Crochet Museum. It's so tiny, this is so weird, come on. Curated by local Sherry Elf, the Crochet Museum is a converted drive through photo stand that is now home to just about every type of crochet animal and figurine you can think of. Crazy fact, Sherry doesn't crochet. She just passionately loves these little critters which she's been collecting since the early 90s. Just to give you some perspective on the actual size, I'm 5'10". It's pretty tiny in here, but there's a lot packed into such a small space. One of our favorite ways to explore the culture of the cities that we visit is through local farmers markets. And 
Joshua Tree has one. We got a pretty good haul at the local farmer's market, which is always a good time. Now it's time to see what we got. We've got two soy-based proteins here. The first one is buffalo shredded chicken. Sounds awesome. And this is apparently their most popular. It's barbecue shredded chicken, so that'll be good on, well, probably all kinds of things. Okay, the next thing happens to be one of my personal favorites. It's ramen. This is technically two servings of ramen noodles in this one bag. Then I mix it with this and Three minutes later, amazing ramen. This right here is red pepper fettuccine, and this is a homemade pasta. There are four servings here. It looks really, really good. I mean, what's, what's not to love about fresh pasta? And we also picked up some organic herbs. We're a little bit low, and rather than pick them up at your major uh, food chains, we decided to pick up our herbs at local farmer's markets instead. This smells amazing, can't wait to try it. Productive haul at the farmer's market. With our local grocery haul complete, it's time to head back to Joshua Tree National Park to share our final must-do adventure here. Here's my card, is this still good? Okay, cool, yeah. I guess the office is closed, so... Did you just talk to the wall? Yeah. <laughs> Dark. I mean, there's nobody there, and it's usually, I think it says 30 bucks. Um, so that's cool. I mean, we had to pass either way. It's a national park, but. There are tons of fun hikes to explore in Joshua Tree. But if you only have a short time here, as you saw, sunrise is a beautiful time to come. But so is sunset. So landing our spot number 10 is hiking Barker Dam Trail as the sun sets. The Barker Dam Trail is a looping trail and is 1.3 miles in length. The estimated time of completion is around one hour. As the name alludes, the trail takes you out to Barker Dam, also known as Bighorn Dam, which was built by cattlemen in the early 1900s. And if you come in the spring or winter, you may even get lucky enough to see water on the trail, which is a pretty rare occurrence in the desert. Y'all know that is the perfect way to sprain an ankle. Not advised. So this tree behind me is called a California juniper. And it's kind of rare that it's right here because usually they only grow at 4,000 feet in elevation or higher. But what you probably know this tree for is because the little blueberries that come off of it actually are used to flavor gin. Go figure. All right, ready to check out Barker Dam? First person perspective. Let's check it out. Damn amazing. You should definitely check it out. Damn good hike. Got some flat surface ahead of us. You know what that means, right? You're gonna run. That I'm gonna run. <laughs> so much fun. If you enjoy running, 
fishing, definitely try running on trails. It's hard to beat the scenery. Petroglyphs behind me were left here by Native Americans. They always wrote in white, black, or red, but their pictures tell stories about the fact that you can easily find food and water here. Well, at least you could hundreds of years ago. Golden hour here is magical, but after a quick discussion about hiking back in the dark and all the animals that might eat us, we decided to head back and enjoy the rest of the sunset across the park as we drove home. So. There you have it, our top 10 things to do in Joshua Tree. If you haven't been, we simply can't recommend it enough. Did I mention there isn't Wi-Fi in the park either? Which is a delightful disconnect from the day-to-day -day rush of normal life. If you enjoyed this video and haven't already subscribed, make sure to do so. It's one of the easiest ways to support our shop local mission. And of course, make sure to wander local wherever you may be this week. It's good for the soul.